Hello. Um. Hold on. I'm just having trouble with the slides. Um. Just a few seconds. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. Again, apologies for the slight delay. Um, okay, so for this session, we're going to discuss the climate change issues. Um, yeah, um, next slide, please. Um, we're going to um, look at um, four um, discussion areas for this session. That would be the first one on dimensions of climate change issues. Um, dito po, titignan lang natin, uh, we'll have a closer look dun sa mga um, present po di Sir Irwin earlier. And then we're going to zoom in on the key climate change issues. Uh, and then um, we'll see yung international and national or domestic climate change responses. So for the dimensions of climate change, uh, we've already heard kanina yung um, first two impacts, risks, and vulnerabilities of humans and ecosystems or those related to adaptation. And then anthropogenic drivers of climate change or those related to mitigation. And for this time, we also add in two more um, means of implementation for climate action or yung, um, resources needed um, for us to implement adaptation or mitigation measures. And also the fourth one, um, monitoring, evaluation, and reporting of climate action and a means of implementation or um, the reports that we need to produce or how do we actually evaluate or assess um, and track the progress of our adaptation mitigation measures and the um, value or the results of the support being provided internationally or the support that we have or resource that we have um, as a country. Um, disclaimer lang din po, um, um, for the issues that will be presented today, um, these do not mean to be exhaustive or these do not mean to be really as complete or as comprehensive as would be ideal and it would really need um, a longer um, discussion time. But for this one, we'd really zoom in on the crucial ones or the key ones and much more new ones na siya na look at climate change internationally and domestically. All right, um, next slide, please. Um, for adaptation or on impacts, risks, and vulnerabilities of humans and ecosystems, we're zooming in on three sectors and issues. I will be on environment and ecosystems, like forests, biodiversity, and freshwater sources, and then on human security in terms of settlements, gender, indigenous communities, and health, and on the economy or economic activity in terms of urban development, losses in industries, infrastructure, and livelihood. Just a quick Recap well, before we proceed. So impacts, as discussed by um, Sir Irwin earlier, are the effects on natural and human ecosystems. Vulnerability refers to propensity or predisposition to be adversely affected. And risks um, refer to uh, the potential for consequences where something of value is at stake and where the outcome is uncertain, recognizing the diversity of values. Uh, for environment and ecosystems, um, we see here um, that prolonged changing conditions become unfavorable for growth and survival um, due to you know, exacerbation of degraded conditions for forests and biodiversity, for example, due to tropical cyclones, high temperature, and long dry periods. Um, we see here um, compromised ecosystem services, diba? thereby compromising biodiversity and human security um, in coastal areas and yung access and, or availability of goods and water for agricultural production. Increased dry season becomes favorable for timber poaching kasi yun mas madaling mag or mas madaling mag -log. and um, compromise din yung health or um, stability ng trees. So, mas madali siyang um, approach. And we also see compromised fresh water sources 
plus adding further strains dun sa water availability for different uses like for domestic or for power. And then um, for biodiversity, yun, may alteration of flowering and fruiting of some trees um, and may changes in habitat then, especially dun sa for food fish, you need that for agriculture and fisheries and yun, may decrease in fish catch. For human security, um, we also see in prolonged change in conditions and extreme weather events that threaten human security. Like uh, recently, diba, we've seen yung extreme weather events which resulted in loss of homes and livelihood, both in terms of yung raw materials and the means to work like um, boats and um, other infrastructure and also your lives. And poverty conditions become exacerbated, especially for individuals in communities na reliant on coastal and agricultural livelihoods, given na, as we said earlier, coastal and agricultural resources also face climate risks and impacts. And there are also heat-related illnesses and incidents of dengue and malaria that have been observed to increase in scale. Um, particularly also for gender, it becomes an issue or it's also an, a climate change issue, mainly due to the social construction of roles and responsibilities, meaning how and what we as a society determine and expect what are acceptable behaviors for women and men, and how and what needs of women and men do we usually overlook. Like say, for example, in um, during extreme weather events, um, yung um, health and safety of men during rescue activities are compromised, giving at a um, social construction of being a, a man or being a father or brother. Kasi diba, mostly expected sila to participate in DRR or rescue activities. So, yun. Um, and then for women also, may compromised health and safety then during um, extreme weather events. Like, for example, in... Um, in my evacuation area, sometimes they don't really have en enough resources to cater to the needs of pregnant and lactating women. Also, um, women, men, and children um, may compromise then your health and safety in relief centers, especially in terms of um, gender-related violence. And in relation also to the social construction of women, for example, um, women fall into chronic indebtedness or parang um, tuloy-tuloy na pangungutang given that uh, micro, some microcrediting schemes are targeting women and they also have roles in making ends meet for the family during extreme weather events. And in some countries, um, women have limited access to capital or rights to property and it increases their sensi sensitivity to climate change. Parang mas nalilimit yung kanilang kakayanan to adapt to climate change. In terms of economy or economic activity, climate change also has consequences for the economy and, the, and economic activity or industries as a result of impacts and risks to available resources or inputs to production. As we see here, in some of the bullets, yung raw materials like food supplies or infrastructure like roads, bridges, ports, and internet or telco providers, and even the power electricity lines and properties themselves like housing, resorts, and um, boats, ganyan. But then we also need to consider na um, e economic activity also has some roles in exacerbating or further deepening the climate risks, usually in terms of activities which do not account for climate change. Um, as you see here again, yun yung choice of location for um, development projects without using climate lens or climate information, and yung also yung rate or speed of activity. Um, that does not consider yung impacts to health and safety in the long run, like in the settlements or buildings, again, particularly without the use of clim the climate lens or climate information. Um, social issues also existing in the first place further deepen the impacts of climate change as a function of increased um, sensitivity, um, like poverty and lack of access to information. So, magpo-continue lang din yung economic activity um, without knowing na in the future magiging unsustainable na to or magiging, um, this would also compromise yung businesses or settlements in the long run. 
and limited available services then like yung agricultural insurance not all of them have yet the support for climate change concerns or yung parang how um, climate change compromises yung agricultural productivity and there also um, in the first place yun na may, meron ding limit limitations in options for housing and the quality of public transportation and add climate change on top of that that then we'll see na mas na heighten yung risks natin and um, the impacts. On this, um, some nuances po. Um, we may need to consider adaptation across sectors or themes. Like, let's see the interplay between ecosystems and economic activity, ecosystems and human security, or um, consider the nexus or the linkages or synergies of the three of them, and also you know, cross-sectorally and cross-thematically. And we may also need to consider yung other underlying factors like labor employment conditions in the first place. If these conditions aren't um, decent, uh, decent in terms of standards um, and they don't also have the proper information or the proper resources needed to also address climate change concerns and other social concerns, then um, add climate change on top of that, then we would render our labor and uh, our labor sector more vulnerable to climate change. And your provision then of basic social services, like in the first place, you must have health, um, insurance, and so on, in order for us to be, parang, um, in order for our adaptive capacities to be further strengthened. And your quality and accessibility of public infrastructure and access to information. Now we move to uh, mitigation. Um, we see here parang two newsletters, no? um, usually the issues or parang concerns or questions about the anthropogenic drivers of climate change. The first one, um, sabi niya, JC emissions, domestic in gains, um, global in effects, Maga like um, for developed countries, they were able to emit um, higher than the developing countries because they've heightened their economic activity. But then, the impacts of climate change or the effects are felt uh, by countries across the globe. So, paano naman yun is this fair? And then, the second question is yung balancing development and mitigation goals. Parang are, we, um, are we compromising our development goals in favor of mitigation? Is it really incompatible? On this, we need to look at um, some of the nuances of mitigation, like just transition. We're just saying now we do not mean to reduce or avoid emissions right away and thus put a stop to emitting sectors and industries because these would have impacts to lives and livelihood. But rather, tingnan natin as soon as possible and gradually at a level that is needed to limit global temperature increase while also taking into account in technological infrastructure capacity and finance needs to transition. We need to consider that the conditions and resources are available for businesses, enterprises, and most especially the labor sector to transition. We may also need, uh, we may also need to consider that the mitigation actions, whether reducing emissions or avoiding emissions, also have opportunities for financing and investment. Since um, globally, they're already crediting in certification schemes, which provide benefits for parties taking part in the schemes. And some investors are already looking at green investments, and they're also available green incent uh, they're also available incentives for, for green or sustainable operations and products. Also, there are also co-benefits to mitigation. Um, like for example, yung um, forest protection, but we will then preserve yung um, ecosystems integrity and continues yung magiging ecosystem services. And then climate action in the first place, adaptation or mitigation na yan is still part of sustainable development. And we can always, always um, um, get the support or the means of implementation from countries, uh, particularly for developed countries, as our right as a developing country. And then in terms of means of implementation for climate action, there are three um, types of means of implementation that would be 
finance, capacity building, and technology transfer. Now, these are resources necessary to plan, implement, and monitor and evaluate actions for climate change adaptation, mitigation, and transparency. For finance, some of the issues is really how to estimate yung financing or investment needs for adaptation and mitigation measures. And how do we program yung available domestic or committed na financing support or climate action? And then, in the first place then, how do we really know how much financing support is available and are these appropriate and accessible? In terms of capacity building, it's also an issue yung availability and yung appropriateness and accessibility of available capacity building options. And how do we institutionalize yung learnings or knowledge from capacity building measures? Parang how do we embed this into our um, lifestyles, our business operations, and our work, day-to-day -day work? And there are also some specific thematic or technical topics on adaptation and mitigation that would need further um, or deeper capacity building interventions and not just yung usual orientation or briefings, but rather nga, in order for us to drive action, or we may need to deepen understanding of um, the technical or thematic topics and adaptation and mitigation. And then lastly, in terms of technology or technology transfer, it's also an issue in availability, appropriateness, and accessibility of available technology options. On these, we may need to take stock of needs. Ano ba yung kailangan natin as um, individuals, as businesses, um, as households, uh, our needs for um, climate action, adaptation, mitigation, and how do we develop strategies for addressing them, like embedding them in policies or plans and um, in business plans. And also, um, we may need to leverage or maximize yung available the domestic and international support windows or further lobby or communicate. One man yung additional na um, means of implementation windows na kakailanganin pa natin. In terms of monitoring, evaluating, and reporting on the status and needs for climate action, some of the issues related to adaptive, um, monitoring, evaluating, and reporting on adaptation is assessment of the accomplishments of adaptation measures. How do we really um, ensure or how, how do we ascertain that we are really achieving our adaptation goals? What would be the methodologies to capture yung adaptation needs? How do we take stock of our needs? And how do we link yung results um, of our adaptation measures horizontally and vertically across um, um, regions or geographical boundaries and bureaucracies and industries or sectors? And on, in terms of mitigation, how do we also assess or how do we ascertain that we are achieving our mitigation goals? And what, how do we apply yung methodologies for estimating reach emissions and mitigation potential? And then, yun, similarly to adaptation, how do we link yung results of our mitigation efforts? And how do we estimate how much are we really contributing to the um, global mitigation goals as a result of our uh, mitigation policies and measures? In terms of means of implementation, how do we also estimate yung support available and support needs? How do we really know how much we have? And how do we assess yung outcomes of our um, spending or investments for climate, capacity building also, and technology transfer? And how do we also ensure that um, the resources that we have or that will be made available to us are appropriate to our needs and would ensure that the results would be effective? Internationally, um, May um, climate responses then across yun nga yung ating four na dimensions of climate issues. First one on adaptation and mitigation, we have, as earlier discussed, the NFCCC, uh, an international treaty on climate change with 197 country parties, and is also a platform for negotiations on climate action at the global level. It's also um, a platform or space for countries to communicate their adaptation needs, mitigation strategies, and the needed support for climate action. Um, the next one in Sustainable Development Goals is, is a, it is our global framework for sustainable development. 
and it's a, um, a framework to end poverty, protect the planet, and improve the lives and prospects of everyone everywhere. And it's composed of seven interrelated development goals. We'll have a look at this um, later. And then the new urban agenda, which mobilizes the member states and other stakeholders to drive in sustainable development goals and urban development at the local level and it contributes to goal 11 of the SDGs on making cities and human settlements inclusive, um, resilient, and sustainable. In terms of means of implementation for climate action or your support needs, internationally, meron pong um, various na climate finance instruments or windows and they come in different forms. As you can see here, in the slides, uh, merong in terms of public financing, there are also some private financing support windows for climate action, and then yung mga banks or multilaterals. Like, you know, um, if you if you can see, there are some projects with other countries on climate change, may technical cooperation and financial cooperation to further drive climate action and scale up our um, climate policies and measures. In terms naman po of technology, CUNFCCC, meron siyang Climate Technology Center and Network. It provides technology transfer, um, technical assistance, and actual delivery of technological instruments to countries availing of support under the network. In terms of monitoring, evaluating, and reporting on climate action and means of implementation, um, the UNFCCC um, has institutionalized various reporting requirements. This would support the global community to take stock of what needs to be done to further curb the impacts of climate change in terms of adaptation or mitigation and on providing and receiving support for finance technology and capacity building. These reports vary um, per party. So for developing countries, uh, mostly our reports, the reports that require the national communications, biennial update reports, and the uh, international communication and analysis. Um, cater to information or provide information on um, the needs of the developing country party on climate action in terms of adaptation and mitigation and the support na kailangan and yung progress then of their efforts. Now for developed country parties, it's quite different because mas um, stringent yung um, reporting requirements. Meron talagang standards that are put in place and there are sanctions for not reporting properly or not complying. And they're mostly reporting on how much support they have provided for developing countries for climate action and also the progress of um, the emission reduction commitments that they have promised under the UNFCCC. But given the um, Paris Agreement, we will see na the parties will have similar reporting requirements na similar just to facilitate yung comparability of um, the reports para mas maging comprehensive and mas madali tayo makapag-assess ng progress um, in of our measures to curb impacts of climate change and also mas to better track yung climate finance and support flows. Nationally naman, um, there are also some measures that were already discussed then by Sir Irwin Kanina so we can just have a review. For adaptation and mitigation, we have um, in, um, our signing of the UNFCCC. We've joined the UNFCCC and we've also adopted the new urban agenda and sustainable development goals. At the same time, we're also a member of the CVF or the Climate Vulnerable Forum and we've also been a, um, the president of the Climate Vulnerable Forum. It, it is um, um, a group of um, uh, developed uh, develop countries that are most vulnerable to climate change and it's also a platform for negotiating as a party of vulnerable countries to leverage or gain more support from developed countries and to make more support available and more accessible to us. And we are also a member of DASEAN and DASEAN also um, has a working group on climate change, which we as a country is also um, an active part of. And in terms of policies, we also have the CC Act and the Climate Change Act or RA9729 amended by RA1174. And it's in, it mandated the Climate Change Commission to create your national framework strategy on 
climate change and the National Climate Change Action Plan, which we'll have a look at later. And these um, plan, uh, this, these plans are developed in coordination with various sectors, like other ministries, civil society organizations, the business sector, and the academe. And we also have the PDP. And we'll see here how climate change has been mainstreamed across the chapters of the PDP. And locally, um, our local development plans and guidance or planning frameworks have also embedded climate change adaptation and mitigation concerns. In terms of means of implementation for climate action, um, we also as a country have provided a number of measures on these, like for finance today, we're talking about the climate change expenditure tagging, and there's also the People Survival Fund and the Risk Resiliency Program, or RRP, and also some sustainable finance initiatives. In terms of capacity building, we have the Communities for Resilience or the Capacity Building for LGUs for Climate Change. We've also provided capacity building on national and local GHG inventories and climate change expenditure tagging. For technology transfer, naman, this usually occurs among NGAs in terms of cooperation or collaboration, like sharing of resources or actual delivery of technological inputs or um, solutions. And also um, it, through collaboration with development partners, like um, for technical assistance or parang um, demonstration of the use of new technologies or capacity building on how to use new technologies and where to access them. And we've also engaged um, in development partnerships on some topics like adaptation planning and MNE for developing mitigation options or identifying measures for mitigation and how to um, measure, report, and verify these measures, how to prepare the reports under the NFCCC and some projects or measures under sectors like forestry, and agriculture, industries, and energy and transport. And um, some development partnerships have also provided um, support for other NGAs or LGs. For the Philippines naman, the monitoring and evaluating and reporting on climate action and support facilitates, number one, the tracking of progress of our adaptation and mitigation measures and the effectiveness and appropriateness of our domestic resources and also the um, international support that has been provided to us or are, that are in the pipeline. And also supports in policy formulation by giving us the information that we need to develop appropriate policies to address climate change and also other sustainable development concerns and social issues. And it also promotes convergence among various actors like governments, businesses, and civil society. And it also provides the information needed for us to access um, financing instruments and windows. As an example, um, here is um, the NICDIS or the National Integrated Climate Change Database and Information Exchange System. Um, it is a platform which um, provides information on yung GHG inventories and yung um, MRVR measurement reporting and verification of our mitigation measures and policies. And also for adaptation and MNE reports, climate finance, action plans on climate change, and also the climate reports that we've prepared. And this platform is available po online. Um, I post namin po yung link sa chat later. And yung information published here provides um, information for long term development planning and are also inputs the various climate reports. Some other reports would that we prepare are, um, for example, for the CCEP, um, the monitoring of um, climate expenditure at the agency request, um, expenditure and GAA levels, and also investment plans for and programs for LGUs, and the progress of um, the GAA and special provisions. And then we also prepare climate budget briefs and briefers for it for us to have better information on um, the domestic or public funding that we make available on climate change. We also have the results-based monitoring and evaluation system for the National Climate Change Action Plan. And we recently released the report po 
on the implementation of the NCCAP from 2011 to 2016. And in, lastly, for international reporting naman natin, no, for the UNFCCC, we already prepared two national communications, one in 2000 and the other one in 2014. And we've provided information or national circumstances like our socioeconomic um, situation and goals, um, the results of our um, vulnerability assessments and the level of our emissions for national JC inventory and what adaptation and mitigation programs we have in place and what other support needs and what gaps and needs and constraints need to be addressed for us to further scale up our adaptation and mitigation programs, as well as other information like our initiatives on education and public awareness on climate change. And right now we're um, preparing to um, have our, uh, we're preparing to create our third national communication to the UNFCCC. So ayun lang po, and for further reference, um, nandito po yung resources natin that we used for the slides, and I encourage na, ayun, tignan din po natin siya for us to have a closer look at some of the climate change issues and the nuances for us to also better plan um, climate change policies, activities, and programs. Yan po. Maraming salamat po.